First of all, a real challenge in training Miguel Cotto. How everything has gone into training camp and what kind of a fighter we're going to see on June 5th. The training camp is way better than I ever expected. Uh, you know, his style of boxing is totally the opposite of my style, which I treat. The, uh, I don't believe in too much bedding down. I don't, even with short fighters, I have trained short fighters. Uh, Alexis Aguello and uh, Aaron Pryor, the rematch, I trained Pryor. And even though he was the same height, but he still he boxed. And, but the, the, the difference is, Miguel, I made him go back to being what he used to be. He was originally, when he first turned professional, he was a beautiful little boxer puncher from Puerto Rico. And some kind of way he drifted in the habit of just having his head bent down too much, feet too far apart, not able to throw combinations effectively because his balance was so bad. And really I tried to come in and just get him back to what he used to be. It wasn't really having major changes because he had to be a great fighter to be where he is and to do what he did. And uh, he caught on to things very quickly and then third the third day he realized what I was trying to tell him. And, he began to box, start utilizing the footwork. We started training to the salsa music. He keeps his rhythm up because I found out he loves to dance salsa. So that's, uh, and it, it works with what I'm trying to accomplish. But I was excited about the idea of training him because having been a broadcaster on most all of his fights, I was always a big fan of his. And I think more so than just his boxing talent. Like most of the fans, he is what I would call a really uncomplaining, proud warrior. This guy has never, ever complained. And he's been in so many physically brutal fights. I've saw at least about six of them, more than any other fighter that I've known of, probably outside of Arturo Gatti. The uh, fights with uh, Claudi, Margarita, uh, even Zab Judah, Mosley, Pacquiao, and I forgot the kid that he fought that had beaten him in amateurs. Uh, no, Torres was another one where he was down at least a couple of times. And it was another kid he, he fought uh, in Puerto Rico he was down there. But he's fought so many good fighters and fought everybody in the 140-pound division. He didn't dodge anyone. So I admired him just because of his competitive spirit, and he never complained, and he always gave his best effort. So I leaped at the opportunity to work with him because it's a big challenge to see if I can help him come back after all of those tough fights, and most of the boxing world has said that he's finished. Uh, I'm one fight, maybe two fights too, so, too late. So it's a challenge for me, and I like what he's doing. But the biggest problem I'm having is that his opponent is such a difficult and underappreciated fighter. You know, people say, who is Miguel Cotto fighting since you're training him? I say, Yuri Foreman. They say, who's that? Not George Foreman, Yuri Foreman. And uh, no one knows who he is, and, uh, and because of that, there's not that much credibility, and it may be one of the most talented fighters in boxing today. I think Yuri Foreman is a very, very good boxer, tremendous footwork, stamina, ability to think in the ring, and he can go 15 rounds on his toes in one direction, and go 15 rounds in the other direction, which means it's going to be a very difficult fight for anybody. So that's my concern is more about Yuri Foreman now than just the way Miguel is looking. Miguel is looking very good. Assuming, assuming uh, Miguel wins against Foreman, do you see do you see Miguel staying at 154 or coming back to 147? Do you see either way? I think that Miguel could fight at 47 or 54 very effective. Uh, his normal weight is about 160. I remember when he was 10 years old, he was 160 pounds. So he's a kind of big bone kid. But right now, I say this weight is really about 152, 51. So could, he could fight as a junior middleweight or welterweight. And the two divisions, which is, which is about seven pounds or so uh, between them, uh, it's not that much anyway. So it's, But he, he could fight either, either one of them very comfortable. But that's up to him. What do you think happened, um, especially on his fight against Manny Pacquiao? There were many flaws there, but... What do you think really happened there? I think to summarize what happened in the Manny Pacquiao fight is basically what I'm working on right now. He's bending his head down too far. Actually, even though Manny is only 5'6", if you look at the fight, Manny was taller than he was the way that the body position was. 
People hit his head down so low that he didn't even see the punch that he got caught with, which was an uppercut tank punch, because he was in such an uncomfortable position where he was training and fighting. And up until then, he was doing very well, particularly behind his left jab. It's the one punch that he doesn't use it much. He has a fantastic left jab. And uh, he was, I thought, doing very good. And then he got in with the punch, and I could see maybe it happened because he was just bent and down too low. He actually was fighting at the height of 4 feet 11 if you would actually measure where he had his head at. And that's one of the things I'm trying to do is get him to fight in a little bit more of a normal height position and to keep his weight evenly balanced and not so much up over the left front feet. Um, every time Miguel fights, especially because of his style in recent fights, everyone or mostly every people expect a brawl. You said that Joey Foreman is a very technical fighter. A guy that fights in goes out. What do you think we'll see on June 5th? You What definitely won't fight? see a brawl, I don't think, uh, with anyone with Yuri Foreman. Uh, I think you're going to see Miguel Cotto trying to a lot of pressure, put pressure, and you're going to see Yuri Foreman moving, moving, and trying to run in and punch him and, 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 and grab at the same time. And Miguel is going to have to try to force the fight to hem him up and make him have to make a commitment to stand toe to toe. But it's going to be a case of Miguel trying to force Foreman to, to fight. Because Foreman's best strategy is going to be to move, box, which is what he should do. Because he knows that Miguel is physically very strong and a very big puncher. So it's going to be a case of a, really a case of a boxer puncher, one of the classics, uh, Jack Dempsey, Gene Tuna type situation. It's Kronk and Tampa now. I see all the guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is like we used to do in the old days uh, when one of the guys fought the whole team traveled. But in this case here, to really get Miguel properly prepared, we needed fast fighters, not the old professional type who just lay in one spot and bob and weave so we couldn't get what we wanted so I just said okay we got a slew of fighters back home uh, all about the same weight so we just had all of them just come down and was trying to pick one or two I just said everyone get on a plane and come here and this worked out because these guys are fast moving technical fighters and that's really what uh, Yuri is he's not really a professional type slow type guy he's very fast so we just brought the whole team down to train here so it's it, it's worked out pretty good.